We are going to ag again going to deal with short run type 2. So the curves in the upper graph are the same as the ones we've been working with before. We're going to be dealing with other prices. First I'm going to talk about P1 and then I'm going to talk about P2. I'm going to derive from the upper diagram, the lower diagram, which is the graph of total profit for those two prices. And again, we're going to start with P1. And the upper left are the standard rules that we've been using all along. The last one is pretty trivial. We'll always use it. Profit at Q equals zero is minus fixed cost, so you always start at minus fixed cost. I like to use this rule next, the first one. Compare price to average total cost, or one, another way to think about it is average revenue with average total cost. to so see if we're going to get positive profits anywhere. Average revenue is here, and average total cost is here. And clearly, there's no way that price is ever going to get bigger than average total cost. So profit's always going to be negative, which means we're always going to be below this line. Now you can see what the answer is. The answer is the graph label P1. So I've already drawn what the answer is. You can see that profit is always going to be negative. So that takes care of that condition. The next condition, we can, we can use this one. This one's somewhat more obscure. Is profit ever going to equal minus fixed cost? So you look at price versus average variable cost. Well, price is P1, which is here. And average variable cost is here. So there is a point here where price is going to equal average variable cost, and therefore where profit in the bottom graph is going to equal minus fixed cost. And you can see that indeed I have drawn it that way. So profit equals minus fixed cost on the line of P1 at this point as well. Finally, let's look at the last rule. When is profit rising and when is it falling? So you compare price or marginal revenue to marginal cost. So let's do that. Marginal revenue is here, marginal cost is here. So this has a somewhat complicated pattern. In this region, marginal revenue is above marginal cost, so marginal profit is positive, so profit itself should be rising. In this region, marginal cost is above marginal revenue, so marginal profit is negative, so profit should be falling. And in this region, Marginal cost is again bigger than marginal revenue, so marginal profit is again negative, so profit should be falling. And you can see that the line that's called P1 is drawn in that matter. In that manner, profits falling in this region, it's rising in this region, and then it falls later on. So that's the explanation of how you get P1. One more thing to note about P1. We saw in the other diagram that the supply curve was multiple valued at P1. That the firm was indifferent between producing at zero or producing at the bottom of the average variable cost curve. After that point, it, for higher prices, the supply curve followed the marginal cost curve, and at lower prices, the supply curve just went to zero. You can see now, we can see now why it was that the supply curve was multi-valued at this price. It was multi-valued because if you l look at the P1 diagram at the, at the bottom, the firm gets where would you go if you wanted to maximize profit? Okay. You, you have the, the P1 curve, and you want to go to the highest points. Well, there are two high points, this one and this one, and they're equally high. You don't want to go to any other point. You just want to go to those two points.
So that's why in the top diagram at P1, there are two places where you want to go, and you're equally happy at either one. One is at Q equals zero, where you earn a minus fixed cost, and the other is at the that intermediate point there, and you also earn minus fixed cost there. So the the, the P1 graph here at the bottom explains why the supply curve at the top has that particular shape. I'm now going to clean up this diagram, erase lots of the marks that I've made, and we'll go to the price of P2. So the marks have been erased, and going to a price now of P2, the simplest rule is always the the f first one, is, is always the last one, that uh, profit at Q equals zero is minus fixed cost. So we'll start here with, and this is this is the one that we're trying to find, P2. We're trying to explain. Now I like to use this one next. Is pro profit ever going to be zero? Is it ever going to reach zero? So you compare price to average total cost. So price is here. Average total cost is here. And you can see, y yes, there are places where price is going to be above average total cost. Look at points B and D. Between B and D, average revenue is bigger than average total cost, and so profit should be positive. So between B and D, profit should be positive, and you can see that's the way I drew it. To the left of point B, average total cost is bigger than average revenue, so profit is negative. So to the left of point B in the bottom diagram, profit should be negative, and you can see that's the way I've drawn it. To the right of point D, in the upper diagram, average total cost is bigger than average revenue, so in the bottom diagram, profit should be negative, and it is. So that takes care of whether profit's greater than or less than average total cost. Let me skip the second one for now and do the third. When is profit rising and when is profit falling? Okay, for that, we need to compare marginal revenue to marginal cost. So I've left the marker for marginal revenue there. Marginal cost is here. So you have two crossings at C and at A. In between C and A, marginal revenue is above marginal cost, so marginal profit's positive, so profit should be rising. Oops, that's that's to A, Sorry. to A and to C. To the left of A, which is this little area here, marginal cost is bigger than marginal revenue, so profit should be falling. And then to the right of C, which is this region, marginal cost is bigger than marginal revenue, so again, profit should be falling. Okay. So now look at the line labeled P2. And y you, can, you can see that here's point A. So to the left of A, profit's falling. Between A and C, there's C, profit's rising. And then after C, profit's falling again. So that takes care of that criterion. How about the second one here? Compare, we want to find out where profit's equal to minus fixed cost. Well, of course, that's true at zero. Is it true anywhere else? So let's see which are the relevant lines there. The relevant lines there are price and average variable cost. So let me pause to mark those. Average variable cost is this curve. So you do have intersections, but I didn't label them before. One intersection is here. And the other intersection is here. So these are, you know that profit is equal to minus fixed cost at Q equals zero. These are other places 
where profit equals minus fixed cost. If we bring those down to the bottom graph, here's what you'd get. So I've marked two vertical lines where price equals average variable cost, and in the bottom diagram, the P2 curve should go through minus fixed cost at that two point, at, at those two points. In other words, the P2 curve should be equal to minus fixed cost in this circle and this circle. Now you can see I didn't draw the P2 curve on on the left exactly right. I drew it a little bit higher than it ought to be. Uh, I'm sorry, that's on the left. On the left I drew it a little bit higher than what it ought to be. On the right I, I, couldn't con I can continue it so that it goes like that and to match it. In general this this criterion that we're working with, comparing price to margin of uh, profit to marginal fixed cost, I'm sorry, profit to fixed cost to minus fixed cost, is a less important criterion than the other three, and that's why I actually didn't pay attention to it when I was drawing this diagram originally. But having uh, having explained uh, everything you can see how if you wanted to take into it into account you could have so this concludes our discussions of how to get total profit curves in short run type 2 we're next going to do how to get total profit curves for short run type 1